Hi there, Toy here, and today I'm going to be talking about book reviews. So here I am still on my couch. Um, you might see one or two more videos from this location, but hopefully not too many more. Once again, I am joined with Margie, so she may or may not be popping up on the video. And like I said, this, re this video is going to be about book reviews. And it's basically in response to uh, a panel discussion from Go Indie Now. And of course, I'll leave the link below. And they had this panel discussion. By the time this video comes up, might have been a week or two ago. Um, I tried to respond to it as quickly as I could, but, you know, life. So anyway, um, I didn't get to participate when it was live. I really wanted to. I even set a reminder for it and everything. But again, you know, life. So um, once I got a chance to watch it later, I really wanted to kind of like say something. Not necessarily to the, the panel themselves, just there were things that kind of sparked some thoughts and I wanted to share them. So if you, you know, spark some thoughts, um, please, you know, leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think. Make your own response video. I don't know, but I'm going to try to just cover the things that really stood out to me from their video. But of course, um, I'm not going to cover everything. Um, the panel discussion is about, it's a little, I think it's a little over an hour. So if you do watch it, make sure you've got some time set aside. It's a really good discussion. So I'm just going to kind of jump right in to the things that stood out to me. So the first thing I want to mention was they talked about leaving reviews themselves, um, when they, where and how they leave reviews, why they do or don't. And there's many reasons people do or don't leave reviews. I get it. Um, sometimes it's hard for me to leave a review for a number of different reasons and I think I'll kind of explore that as I answer the different questions but there was one thing that really stood out in that particular part of the conversation was that one guy said that he doesn't always leave the same review everywhere now when I think of that it, it kind of gets my mind whirling because I can remember a particular instance a while back where uh, a friend of mine someone that I know who lives near in my area we could hang out you know but we're both very busy so we don't hang out but I follow him on Facebook and so anyway, he had posted something saying that he had uploaded his latest story onto Amazon you know go check it out and it wasn't directed towards me it was like just anyone on Facebook who happens to see this message so in my mind I'm thinking I know this guy I like this guy of course I'm gonna read his stuff so I got a copy of it, I read it, and then I reviewed it. Now here's the thing. When you review something on Goodreads, you can pretty much say and write whatever you want. Um, there's been some controversy about, you know, trolling, um, behavior from the reviewers, behavior from the authors. So I don't really, you know, get in that too much because I just made a commitment to myself to be an ethical reviewer, and that's pretty much all I deal with. So in my Goodreads review, I explained how I was so excited about my friend's new release and I got the copy and I read it and I reviewed it. And so I put all that in there. When I went to post that same review to Amazon, they wouldn't let me include all that personal information. So basically, it's the exact same review minus the personal information. Same rating. I mean, it's it's word for word, just, you know, I took off the little intro part where I talked about my friend, and then they let me post it. And of course, it was a verified purchase, so there wasn't really a whole lot they could do. You know, I they either way, I was going to leave my rating. So that's an instance like that is the only time I've ever even considered writing a different review on a different platform. Whatever review I write on Amazon, I write on Goodreads, I write on my blog, I write on wherever it is I'm posting that review. But apparently, other people don't. And the crazy thing about it is, is I thought I was seeing that, 
But I'll, I'm going to be honest here. I have been accused of being a pessimist several times, and I don't really care. <laughs> I'm a realist. I don't look for doom and gloom or expect the worst, but I am shocked when things turned out positive. So if that makes me a pessimist, fine. But I seriously thought that I was being like a negative Nancy because I would see reviews on different platforms from who I assumed were the same people, and they wouldn't match up. Now, I'm not saying I see this all the time. This isn't like a, like a, a movement or anything. But, you know, there were a couple occasions when I would see stuff like that. And I'm like, Toy, you're just being negative. Stop, you know. But then when I listen to this guy say that, yeah, he doesn't always leave the same review. And that blew my mind. I was like, so people really do that. I, uh, the other, only, the only other instance of something like that I can think of is that I've seen people leave like, um, like really like a low rating for a review and they'll leave like bullet points like one two three four five this is why i didn't like it if you want to see my full review go here and in an instance like that i don't think that's the same thing because they're telling you that they didn't like it or that they did like it they're giving you bullet points and they're sending you somewhere else to get the their whole like emotional spill of why they did or didn't like it and the rating is the same what this guy is saying is that sometimes he writes a different review and might even give a different rating on different platforms. And that, again, just blows my mind. And I guess, you know, for some people that's not a big deal. But for me, it just, I don't know. I'm First of all, I'm glad to know that I'm not crazy. I'm not a negative Nancy. I was seeing stuff like that. And the second thing is, I, I mean, just for me personally, I don't like it. I don't. I feel like it makes the reviewer unreliable because as the reader as the person who doesn't know this you know reviewer who doesn't follow their blog or anything like that you know if I come across something like that just you know in passing I'm thinking well why did they leave this review here but then leave that review there which one is the more honest review you know it just to me it just seems really unreliable but you know, I, I seem to be in the minority about a lot of things when it comes to book reviews. So I'm going to move on to the next thing now. All right. So another thing that the panel talked about was um, people asking for reviews, contacting you about, you know, reviewing their stuff. And, you know, a lot of book reviewers, I will just go ahead and say this. Um, I work in special education. People are all the time telling me that I'm a saint and I'm not going to argue with them. But I'm also going to say that I think book reviewers are just highly unappreciated because they don't get paid to review books. You know, they they review books because they love to read the books and they want to share their experience. And sometimes people are just nasty to book reviewers. They make it seem like they're entitled to their review and they're not. You know, I mean, book reviewers, anyone who reads a book has the right to review the book or not review the book. So book reviewers, you know, they, they go through a lot where people put them on pedestals and, you know, treat them overly nice. And then they are the, you know, opposite extreme to where they treat you like garbage and trash, like you owe me this review or something. So for me as a reviewer, and I, you know, I have this policy posted on my blog, I do not accept unsolicited review requests. I just don't. I like to read for pleasure and because I'm an author I think that also makes a difference a lot of um, book reviewers um, they just they're just reviewers they don't write themselves um, but some of them do so you know either way works fine but for me it just seems like a conflict of interest for me to all the time be reading things that were just based on a request so I have a pretty much a flat-out policy that I don't accept unsolicited review requests there's a couple of you know um, contingencies to that um, sometimes I will sign up to do a book review tour but I signed up for that you know what I'm saying and so like I do let people know that they can leave me a message on my contact page to say hey my book is going on a tour check out my tour and usually what will happen is I'll look at the time that I have to devote to it. If I don't have time, if the book review, I mean, if the tour is hosting like a book spotlight or an interview, I might do something like that. Um, it's it's not impossible, but it is rare um, for me to sign up for the book review portion of the tour. But I've done it before because I have a right to do so. But that doesn't mean I just accept anyone's request to review their book. Now, 
I'm going to talk about two specific instances where, um, you know, this gets a little crazy. There's a trend that, you know, I guess got started, I don't know when, some one blogger said it and then a thousand other bloggers repeated it, saying that if you send someone a nice email and just attach a copy of your book, they might review it. And, you know, frost your lucky charms, it's true, someone might review your book if you send it to them, but they are under no obligation whatsoever to review your book. If you send me a copy of your book that I have not asked for, I might review it when I get around to it. Now, if you contact me and ask me about why I haven't reviewed your book, I am not going to review your book, even if I do read it, even if I like it. I mean, I'm not a horrible person. I don't believe out of, you know, just because again, I'm an ethical person, I will leave a rating, but I'm not going to leave a review because I didn't ask you for the book. You sent it to me with an expectation. So you just kind of rubbed me in the wrong way. Um, then there's this, this thing where a lot of people win books. Oh my goodness. I love <laughs> winning books. I, I, it's become a problem. I have to limit myself to the number of contests that I enter because I feel like I'm somehow just, you know, it's not good people, but I win a lot of books. Um, and so usually when you win a book, you know, they say, you know, it'd be nice if you would review it, but you're not required to because it's the law. You can't give someone a book and require them to review it. You can say, I'm giving you this book, I'm giving you this book for you to review. But if you don't review it, obviously I can't come after you because you just can't do that. But um, it's rare that I enter those kinds of contests. Um, usually I enter the ones where they just say, here's a book. So they're not expecting a review. Of course, anytime you give someone a book, you're hoping that they're going to review it, duh. But, you know, see, there's a little bit. So I just wanted to clarify that there are some times when you get a book through a contest and they want you to review it, but again, you don't have to. And then there's times that you get a book through a contest and that's just your prize, you know. So I actually had an instance where I won a book from a contest and maybe one or two months like I don't think it had even been like we'll say two months went by and this person emailed me and asked me had I read their book yet and I explained to that person at the time I was like um do you realize how many books I have on my TBR list do you know how many books I'm reading right now I won this book because I was interested in it and I will get to it eventually and if I read it I will review it, but I don't appreciate you contacting me asking me why I haven't read and reviewed your book yet. The story goes on even further, but that's just something you don't do, people. You just don't. And like I said, I'm not even a full-time book reviewer. It's just something I do for fun. That was my experience. Uh, another thing that was kind of mentioned was that sometimes people don't leave reviews because... They don't want to like hurt the author's feelings and I appreciate that so much because I've written some horrible stuff and people were kind enough to let me know. <laughs> but I also recognize the fact that, again, if someone reads something, they have a right to review it and they're not always going to take your feelings into consideration. I like to think that people aren't hurtful, but we do live in an age of internet bullies and trolls. So... For me, I have a policy, aside from what I just mentioned, if I read something, I'm pretty much going to review it. And um, if I don't like it, I will say that, but I will say why I don't like it. And then I always remind people that when I, you know, leave a low rating and a, you know, a review that some people might not consider positive, I always point out that just because I don't like something doesn't mean that others won't. Um, and, you know, I had a, have a, I've had a couple of instances where I've left, like, um, and also my review policy might be a little, I don't know, different from what most people do. Uh, typically, if I finish a book and I don't like it, I'm giving it a one because I took the time to finish it and then the end didn't just stop me. If I do not finish a book and I don't like it at the point where I stop reading it, um, DNF, um, I give it a two because 
I, I like to give things the benefit of the doubt. I honestly don't know that if I had continued reading that book that something would have completely shifted and blown my mind. I don't know and I'm not willing to find out. So typically I give those kind of books a two and then you know threes and fours and fives and I personally don't consider a three-star review a bad review because to me a three-star review means that they they didn't like it no they did not like it <laughs> negatives um but you know what i'm saying like if someone i i don't know maybe that's just me but if someone doesn't hate something that i've written and they've given me a three-star review i'm fine with that so i leave a lot of three-star reviews for books that i'm just like yeah i read it you know um yeah you know so I, to me, I don't think that's bad. It's just, to me, it's just like watching, you know, a made-for-TV movie that, you know, yeah, I watched it. Some made-for-TV movies are phenomenal, and some of them are just like, yeah, you know? And then some of them are like, uh-uh. So to me, that's the difference. So anyway, moving on from that. So on getting reviews, uh, I don't feel like they were, the this panel was very clear on ways to really get reviews. They kind of talked about their struggles in getting reviews, and which I, I can totally relate to that. As a author, it seems like getting reviews and reaching world peace are the two hardest. I know that's an exaggerating exaggeration. I would I would say finding world peace, um, getting global. Um, free energy <laughs> and book reviews are the three hardest things that wrote though. Anyway, so, but I did want to say that, um, you know, just kind of in response to that, for me, myself, getting reviews sometimes comes really, really difficult. You know, I have to work really, and then sometimes it comes really easy. Um, I don't, I've never had a lot of reviews. But it just, you know, so here's what I've done, you know, in the past, I, I've set up my own like blog tours. And um, now I am totally not opposed to paying someone else to do a blog tour for me. It just depends on my financial situation at the moment. Because I am completely indie, I have to, you know, be careful where I, you know, put my finances. So a lot of times I do just, you know, schedule my own blog tours. Um, and so... Uh, that's a good way to get reviews and then let's see one thing that I would like to say is that all those you know Facebook review groups they don't work that's why most of them have disbanded and disappeared and I feel like there's this misconception everyone goes around saying that Amazon you know is spying on people and following them to see who their friends are and stuff and I I just really don't think that Amazon is doing that I think that people are not dumb and the people who program their algorithms aren't dumb and they can easily pick up on patterns you know if you've never written a book review and then all of a sudden you review 20 books and then the authors of those 20 books turn around and just happen to review your book I mean I don't think that that's a really difficult algorithm to develop to figure out that pattern and I think that's the problem that some people are having is that they're just trading reviews even if they don't know that that's what they're doing i think for me it's helped that i i review um books that my friends have written but i review lots of other people's books too um i read i review a lot of indie books but i will read and review you know mainstream publications as well um i would say you know obviously i do a lot more in the indie publishing industry but, you know, it's just, you know, I think Amazon is pretty, you know, smart. That's And that's all it is, is that, like, for me, just using myself as an example, they know my pattern. They know that once a month I do a review dump, you know, because all of the books that I've read, I don't re usually review things as, you know, right after I've read them, I go on to the next thing. But they know that I'm going to leave, you know, three or four reviews a month. Uh, it's going to be a uh, a variety of things, collected things, you know, and um, some of them might be from authors that I associate with on social media. Some of them won't be authors, that, you know, and so again, it's just because I, I make, I try really hard to be an ethical reviewer. I think that people like me don't get caught up in, you know, Amazon's algorithm. And so I think if people are just, you know, honest, 
it'll all work out. I'm not saying that there aren't flaws and I'm not saying that some people haven't been shafted because the algorithm picked up on a pattern that wasn't really there. I'm not saying those things at all, but I'm just saying that some people, you know, I feel like they're crying wolf because they've never reviewed anything other than, you know, people that they know personally and that can be a problem you know if you're only reviewing books that your friends have written it kind of seems biased but if you're reviewing everybody's stuff it doesn't seem biased so um i think the last thing that i'm going to mention that they discussed in the panel is how to handle negative reviews and i pretty much have the policy of i don't interact with the people who review my books unless Again, we're connected somewhere on like social media, um, somewhere outside of the reviewing platform. When someone leaves a review on Amazon or Goodreads, whether I agree with the review or not, I try to, um, I think on Goodreads you can like the review and on Amazon you can say, did you find this review helpful or not? Now, unless I feel like someone is a complete and utter troll, I'm going to go and just say, yeah, this review was helpful. Uh, the main reason, I have two main reasons why I don't stress about negative reviews. Um, well, actually, I'll say three. There's three main reasons why I don't stress about negative reviews. Number one, any book that has all four and five star reviews and nothing else looks a little suspicious. So it's okay to have a so-called negative review from time to time. And I, I think it look <laughs> I think it legitimizes your book. Um, the second reason that I don't stress negative reviews is something that I mentioned earlier. I feel like anyone who takes the time to read a book from beginning to end, and even if they don't finish, you know, if anyone who takes time to read a book has a right to review or to not review. And I'm I, I would hope that more people would take the approach of being constructive with their criticisms. That's just not always the case. You know, some people are miserable, horrible people and they want to take it out on anyone they can, including some stranger who, you know, spent however many hours of their life writing, you know, 90,000 words that they didn't agree with. So, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if someone read the book, they have a right to review it. I have relatives who've never read anything that I've written. So if someone reads my book, they have a right to review it. Um, I just hope they won't be hateful, but can't control people do. And the third reason is that if someone leaves a, a, a like a bad review and nowhere in the review they say why, I just assume they're a troll and I go on with my life. Um, for those particular instances, um, I might um, Depending upon, you know, how severe it is, I might report, you know, like, like rebuke, abuse or something like that. But basically, when I see a review that I assume is from a troll, obviously, if it's on um, Goodreads, I just don't like it. And if it's on Amazon, I just don't say that I thought it was, you know, of any value. Those are the main things that I got from the Go Indie Now panel discussion on book reviews. And I would love to know your thoughts. Um, I really think you should watch the panel if you have the time because they discussed a lot more stuff. These are just the high points of the things that I know I rambled on a lot. And I'm sorry. I just got really kind of excited and kind of passionate once I saw that. And I just wanted to kind of add my two cents. So that's all I have for now. Bye-bye.